Hello guys, uh, sorry for the long wait, I'm back now, but for a short period of time. So I've been held up with so many activities. Now I welcome new subscribers also. So today we want to do bonding version 2. We've, we've done bonding version 1, in which we had to define the, to, to export the particles and use custom API and so on and so forth. Today we want to do bonding using version 2 from EDM 2019, I think, and 2020. Now here, we want to obtain something like this. So as you can see, these are flexible particles. This is what I want us to get. And they are bonded. So because now they are bonded, they remain intact with each other, but they can break, of course, once the forces, they are extreme. As you can see, they are also flexible. Flexible particles, you can see they are bending kind of. As you can see, now this is what I want us to attain. This is only for EDM users, users who know at least the basics of EDM. It's advanced EDM. So there are some steps that I'll go through very fast. So today the main focus is one, the use of bonding version two, two, setting up and understanding the contact radius concept, three, creating the flexible element, and also adding the size distribution. As you can see, there are different sizes. So without further ado, let us start with contact radius concept. I usually insist on the contact radius. The issue of the contact radius is very important because it determines the type of bond. The bond can only be formed where there is an overlap between two particles. As you can see, I have particle A, particle B in this image here. So the bond can only be formed here at the overlap. And the contact radius should always be 0 0.2 or 0 0.2. 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 larger than the physical radius. As you can see, you have the particle radius, so therefore it has to be you multiply by 1.2. So if you have one, one, one millimeter radius, so you put 1.2 as the contact radius, so that we have this overlap. So if it is too small, if it's too small, the contact radius, the bonding that will form will be a of a brittle nature, so it will break easily. And then if it's too large, you'll find that. Let me check if I have a good example. You'll find that you'll find that you'll have a particle, like for instance, you'll find that this particle is bonding with this particle here and they are very far from each other. Therefore, you have to make sure that you don't put it too large because it will give the false bonding information. Now, the next thing that you want to do, we want to do here is to now to start creating our project as usual. So that's what I want us to do. And please make sure that you ensure that you know the contact radius and the nature of bond that you want. Therefore, we start off by creating, saving this project. So we save, we save us EDM flexible tutorial. So we say flexible tutorial. And then the next thing now is to define the project. So we see flexible particles. And please remember that this does not define, it does not dictate the simulation. This is just for purpose of presentations. So we advanced EDM. And then you always save your work. And now we come now to to the units now we come to change the units we have to def to let the units be the length should be in millimeters the velocity should be in meters per second let's look at velocity and the stiffness per unit area stiffness per unit should be newtons per meters cubed please know that it's stiffness per unit area because usually stiffness is newtons per meter then if you put per meters area meters squared then it becomes newtons per meters cubed so now the next thing that we want to do next thing that you want to do now is to create the bulk material so you just come here now you say you add bulk material so this bulk material we are going to call it flexible material or flexible mat like that and please remember the name of these materials and now we need now the next thing we need to define the properties so we put last this 0 0.3 then this one is 7500 and then this one is 1e power 7, like that. 
and then we save and then we define the interactions as usual so we only have one therefore we put restitution as 0 0.3 and then the rest they remain as they are so once we add the equipment material we'll have to define the other type of interaction it must you must put it and the next thing now is to add is to add the particle shape here now we Please note that bonding version 2 is kind of a different, it's kind of a different type of bond where the contact radius is not used for force calculation, instead it's only used for contact detection. Bonding version 2 uses the physical radius to do any force calculation that is needed in the simulation. Therefore, if you want to calculate the forces within the bonds, you need to use bonding version 1, which is available in the other tutorial for rock modeling. Now the next thing now is to create the stem particles because as you have seen in the other, there is a stem and then there is a leaf. We want to create a structure that looks like a leaf. Now we add, we need to add particle. Now we can add, add material. So shape from library, dual sphere like that. So it's dual like that. And then now we will let it remain like that, the way it is. And then now physical radius, we need to put contact radius so we put 1.3 and also the other one 1.3 like that and then now we can rename this we can rename this to stamp like that and then you must calculate properties like that and always save your work and now we need now to add the leaf particle just the same same here and now for leaf particle we just need a single sphere and then edit contact radius, we put 1.3, and then we come here, properties, how to calculate, and now we rename this to leaf particle, in the leaf, like that, and now save our work as usual. Now the next thing that you want to do, you need to add a metaparticle shape, and this metaparticle shape, we are going to add it now from here just come here and then we bulk material and then we add metaparticle shape as you can see now this this metaparticle shape is going to help us to create the leaf particle now you cannot add anything here as you can see we cannot add anything so the only place to come and add is here so i'm going to add and as you can see it's particle one then this particle one is defined by the stem if we change this to leaf only you see it's single sphere now we need to add the stem first and you're going to do it systematically so i need nine particles and that's why i have an excel sheet here now so particle positions like that so we are going to add as guided here so i'm going to try and minimize this so that it's easier for me so we are going to work only on three position x and position y and then we'll see at the end what will happen so we have the first particle as stem like that. Now the next one, we add particle two. Right click, add particle two, put three. And then you see what is happening. Add particle three, still stem, then we put six. Now you, you can see what is happening. Now let's look in the Z direction. Now the minus position like that. So you can see what is happening. Now this is the stem. Now we need to put leaves. We need to put leaves. Now we need to add other particles, add particle 6, and now we are going to put it at position 6 in the x and also minus 2. So 6 and minus 2 here. And now we add another one. We put 6 minus 2, not, not minus 2, now it's plus 2, like that. Now as you can see, something is happening. So you can see now my particles. As you can see the way, the way it looks now the other thing that you need to do is now to add leaf 8 but now as you can see you can see now particle 6 we need we don't need to be the same because it's the leaf part therefore we change to leaf like that and also leaf like that so that it looks good because you don't want to be the stem part so even for the stem you can put three particles and so on and so forth now we add another one now i put leaf and then now here we say it's 7.4 and then we change we also put this to 3.4 like 
important and you can see now it's st starting to take shape and you can add as many particles as you want so you do the like a mirror of each other now, like that now you make sure it's leaf and then you save your work now we are done with that part as you can see now it looks good you should have something like this now the next thing now we want to do is to create now to determine now the size distribution of the meta particle come here now put go to random once you go to random now put the minimum size as 0 0.8 and the maximum size as 1.2 and you scale by radius like that now it will be random sizes when it's doing the simulations now the next thing now the next thing now is to go now to the equipment material please note that no overlap should be here you should ensure that there is no overlapping of particles there is no that overlapping is not there they're just almost touching each other but there is no overlapping now let's go now to the next one go now to the equipment material now we add equipment material equipment material one now this is the these are the properties that we want so this is 7500 and then this one is 1 e power 10 so best way is just come here if you don't want to put 10 just put 100 there and now we add the interactions now automatically it picks the material the bulk material the coefficient of restitution we change it to 0 0.2 and then the other ones we let we let them remain as they are so because now we are okay with that now if you add if you click this no further interaction no further combinations are possible now we're okay now we come here now to the geometries we come to the geometry part so for the geometry part i have my root folders i have my root folders here so in the folder that i'm doing my simulation i have my geometry saved there so we can come here just uh, import geometry now once we import we go to edm it's this one now sieve box so you, you start with the sieve now you put millimeters and then you say merge sections and then you say okay like that and then i'm going to put default view and then now you see the good thing about edm 2020 it names it it does not rename the geometry or the CAD file imported it just the way you name it when you are saving it for exportation from your software inventor it just comes the way it is you don't need to rename it unlike the other versions where you had geometry one geometry two and so on and so forth so this is open sieve box so you do the same same thing put millimeters and then you say merge sections then you say okay Now, once you do that, you have something like that. Now, the next thing that you need to do is to add our factory, we create our factory. So we need a polygon, a flat, and we also need something that's gen constantly generating the particles. Therefore, therefore, once we do that, we need, once we know that we need something that's constantly generating over time, therefore, we know that we need a dynamic factory. Now, for this, factory now we need to come to the polygon type the number of edges is four now the other edge we need the size of the edges so you can put edge a as 40 millimeters and edge b as 30 millimeters like that i know this because i have done this before now and then i come here i have to rotate by 90 degrees and also I have to position it. I want to position it along this part. So you have to know the dimensions of your geometry so that you know because it's usually it uses the global axis. So you should know the position of your geometry. The, as you can see, the reference is parent, not global. So if you use global now, it will start measuring from here. Now it uses the parent now. Now in the X and Y position, the x and y position now you can put minus 10 and then here we can put 45 millimeters and you'll see that i want it here that's what i want it depends with what you want also on your part and now this factory i want to change it now 
instead of it being physical i want it virtual and then i save my work and then now i can add my factory so add my factory this is my factory one as you can see this is my first factory i want it to be dynamic then the total number i want let me put unlimited and then target number per second i want to put it 15 that is 15 and then now the overlap is best checked on contact radius overlap to be on contact radius that's very very important and then here here now i need to do for meta particle zero like that as you can see i have changed that so let let everything remain as it is like that meta particle zero under parameters so under parameters is where you're going to change the meta particle and now because now as you can see here there is something that's not here there is bond bond type bond time there is something that's not here and then you will see once you go now to create to take the version 2 bond version 2 under physics you'll see that there is something that will come here please take note of that now so for the velocity we need the particles to be rushing from here all the way into the sieve now if it's coming to the sieve now it's in the y direction as you can see it's in the y direction therefore we need now to put in the minus y direction because if you put positive they'll go out of the domain box now we come here we put velocity minus 0 0.3 meters per second and then we say okay and now we repeat this now we, you can add another factory here so you can add another one and then you can say unlimited number and then target number we say 50 per second now this one remember that was for the meta particle and now put contact radius and now this one is for the flexible particle and then now we do the same same thing velocity minus 0 0.3 just repeat what you have done like that and now once you do that you always save your work now the next thing that you need to do as you can see there is something that we'll have to check here bond creation time is missing here because now you have to define the bond creation time now we don't need plugin factories because this is in build now we come here particle to particle is the one that we're interested in and click edit contact chain select bonding version 2 for those who have been following my tutorials you know that the last tutorial that i drew for particle stress that's how you can see there is a plugin model here now bonding under bonding version 2 you click like this and now once you click here you come to this part this config current model now once you click there you have now to put your parameters here but for you to for this to be active you must do this flexible and flexible that's what we want and now for you to, for us to be able to do this we have to come back here and check the parameters that we we use and now i know that i have one e power so it's one e8 so i'm going to do this behind the scenes but i'll fast forward this so let me go so press ok like that and then i always always save your work make sure that you save your work now we, if we go now to the factory now we'll see that we have now bond creation time you see now we have creation time we need the bond to be created at the current time step not fixed because when you put fixed now that will mean that the software now will have to work with the time that you select and fix that means it will be half 50 percent accurate therefore it's always a good idea to put it at current time don't put it at fixed time unless you are sure sure that's what you want bond creation time you leave it at current time now we go now to the define environment everything is okay i'll make sure that your domain your auto update auto update from geometry gravity is okay because by that this depends whether because as you can see my z axis is and that's vertical but if your y axis was down as the vertical you now you change the gravity to you work on the y on the y axis now let's go to this now here you out and check auto time step and then here you put 4e for e minus 6 like that and then we let this remain and that and so on and so forth and now estimate the grid cell size so you can decide to estimate 
like that or and just put 3R in like that. Now once we do that, now we can actually start the simulation and see what happens. You can see the flexible particles. As you can see, they are dancing. You can see the flexible part, the flexible nature. And as you can see, there are very big ones and then there are very small ones. It's because of the random sizes that we have selected. As you can see, there is a difference in size. This one is very, very big and this one is very, very small. This one is very, very small. So the smaller ones, they are passing through the sieve. That, that was the essence of the sieve. So you can decide to put as big as you want or as small as you want. You are the engineer. So the simulation has finished. So now we go to analyst. So once you go to analyst, you go to display. Let me just put this by default like that. So you come to display. So we want to hide all the particles. So you can just come this check and display all particles. Then now we come to contact. And now we want to see all the contact bonds that are there. And then here we just come say bond status. Smooth colors, auto update, auto update, show legend if possible, apply to all. And as you can see, so if you put auto update, as you can see, there is that. These are the contact bonds, and you can see they are in purple. So you can decide to change this value depending on. Put one, one like that. And then we click apply. As you can see, nothing has changed. So this is the contact radius. So this is the bond status. So you can decide to color the way you want to color. So this, this is how you do it. So you can even decide to export this data as I'm going to show you. So let's see when you hit apply, what happens. That's too fast. So now I don't want to decide what you want to do with OS. Oh yeah, so you must uncheck hide out of bounds so that it doesn't look bad. Hide out of bounds. So as you can see now, it looks something presentable. As you can see the largest bones, they are there. So you can decide to put one and one or one and two, or you can just decide to click to check auto update and then you do your simulation like that. So as you can see bond status it's intact when it's it's either intact or not. So I want us to, to do something here. So if you put like that you'll find that all of it will be the same color. So I want to put zero for no bonds no zero for no bonds and then one is as the maximum value that is red now as you can see it's either bonded or not so i want us to to return to bring back to bring back the particles and then we see what happens and as you can see the where the large particles are as you can see where there are large particles like this large formation of bonding that's where now we have the red the red bonds where the particles are large, but where there is nothing, you'll find that we have blue. As you can see, we have the bluish part, so which is very, very accurate. Now, the other thing that you can do here, you can come here and export the data. So export results data. So you have, you must add that, and then you must put like, let's say bond like that. And now you come here, must add your query like that. So once you come here, you can come to bond, bond status. So for bond status, it's either 0, 1, or 2. So 2 as the maximum value, as the broken, 2 is broken bonds and so on and so forth. And then 1 is a good bond and then 0, there is no bond at all. Nothing was done there. So you can do that and then you can put here bond.csv. And then we can export this and then we come and see what happens. You want to do two things. Also, the other thing that you can do 
is tangential bond like that. So as you can see, have 0, 0, 1, and 2. So if you want for the x-axis to take 0, y-axis, 1, z-axis, 2, like that, and so on and so forth. So you, that is if you want the tangential bond along that. So you can take the numbers. The numbers are the ones which will help you. So normal bond force. So you 0, 1, 2, 0 is for x, I repeat. 1 is for y, z is for, 2 is for z, sorry. Let's say, let's check like that, and then we do that. I've done a mistake here. I want, I don't want it to be like this. This one was initially bond status, so that's what I want it to be. Now it's okay. Once I rename this, it's okay. Now no more bond force, so we can take it to zero like that. Then we export. As you can see now, we have for query one. So this is query one, no data, no data at time steps. So for different time steps, you'll see that at 0 0.2. Now once the simulation started, contact normal, the normal force. Now this is the normal contact force. And then you can see bond rate, bond status is one. So there are bonds here. So you will not see, I don't think we'll find a two here. As you can see these four zeros are where there is no bond formation. And now, with that, now you, you know how to create flexible particles using EDM, now without any custom API. Now if you like the video, please consider subscribing. For those who have subscribed, you're welcomed to ask any further questions. Thank you.